welcome to this episode. Today's discussion is about how Europe celebrates the Moors. It's a story of how the European continent celebrates black history, their black history, the glorious history of the African Moors who presided over much of Europe between 711 and the 1500s. That's roughly 900 years. It was an incredibly long period of time and it's no surprise at all that events are held till this day across Europe in memory of that hugely defining epoch of European history. Across Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, England and elsewhere, there are traditional festivals dating back to several centuries in which the black African kings and nobles who dominated this continent throughout the Middle Ages are saluted, praised and honoured till this day. The mainstream media rarely ever talk about these festivals, which are attended by huge crowds of thousands upon thousands of people across Europe, each and every year. Many of the participants at these festivals are dressed in blackface or some other form of darkening of the skin colour and Moorish costumes that look like they came straight out of Africa. This is how the Europeans have always appeared at these festivals right from the 15th century when the Moors began leaving Europe. There has been notable resistance in liberal white European anti-racism circles to this form of celebratory dressing. The United Kingdom actually bans participants at their famous British Moorish Dancing Festival from wearing blackface as was the age-old custom. Here at the African History Station, we do not have a problem with this form of celebration of African history. Of course, we are sensitive to the issue with regard to how blackface has been employed by racists in their nefarious activities, but this is the classic case of something not being bad in itself if the intent, purpose, and objective is decent and honorable. We therefore believe that this particular use of blackface in honor of the African wars passes the African History Station smell test. Another important manner in which Europeans celebrate black history is in the production of literally thousands of aristocrat family crests depicting the African founders of their lineage and family dynasties up to the present day. Regarding the nature of these family crests, one writer wrote in the case of Britain, there should be no doubt to anyone that these family crests represent all Britain's black elite, its most noble, wealthy and powerful families. Peasants and commoners did not have family crests and coats of arms, though there is disagreement as to which came first, the crest or the arms, but it seems likely that the crest came first as a family or clan ensign. There are also numerous statues honouring the Moors dating from the Middle Ages which adorn many European cities to this day. The African Moors were very prominent across all of Europe, but they were especially dominant in Spain, where there were up to 200,000 of them in the 12th century. Noted British historian Basil Davidson declared in his work that throughout the continent of Europe, there were no lands in the 8th century AD that were more admired by its neighbours or more comfortable to live in than a rich African civilization which took shape in Spain. So let us explore more of this rich African civilization. Now, of course, generations of Spanish rulers and leaders have tried to expunge this era from the historical record, but their efforts are largely in vain because recent archaeological and scholarship evidence is shedding fresh light on the Moors who flourished in Spain for 800 years or more. And it is becoming much clearer now that Moorish advances in mathematics, astronomy, architecture, art and agriculture helped to propel Europe out of the Dark Ages and into the Renaissance. The Renaissance, of course, was the springboard for the Industrial Revolution that resulted in our modern world. It all started in 711 AD when an army of West Africans on horseback stormed the north of the continent, crossed the Strait of Gibraltar, invaded the Iberian Peninsula and took over Spain. A European scholar who was sympathetic to the Spaniards recalled the conquest in this way. The reins of their horses were as fire, their faces black as pitch, their eyes shone like burning candles, their horses were swift as leopards, and the riders fiercer than a wolf in a sheepfold at night. The noble Goths were broken in an hour quicker than tongue can tell. Oh, luckless Spain! As early as the Middle Ages, Moors were commonly viewed as being mostly black or very swarthy, and hence the word is often used for Negro according to the Oxford English Dictionary. And the author and historian Chancellor Williams, who famously wrote The Destruction of Black Civilization, wrote that the original Moors, like the original Egyptians, were black Africans. The 16th century English playwright William Shakespeare used the word Moor as a synonym for African, and no one recognizes the black Africanness of the Moors more than the Europeans themselves. 
at least those who still care about the tradition and history, as shown by this traditional annual blackface parade in Alcoy, Spain, a traditional parade of medieval kings and nobles reflecting the history of when black African nobles and monarchs ruled over the Iberian Peninsula. Each year, the evening of January 5th is reserved for a much anticipated parade in Spain, where families gather to fill the streets in remembrance of the three wise men, Balthazar, Melchior, and Gaspar. What was once a purely religious celebration has now become Spain's most controversial display of blackface. This is the Three Kings Parade. The parade, known in Spanish as Dia de los Reyes Magos, takes place 12 days after Christmas and is widely celebrated across Latin America, Spain and some parts of the United States. Typically, the celebration commemorates the biblical arrival of the three kings in Bethlehem and is greatly anticipated for the elaborate spectacle of gifts, sweets and commotion. The level of adoration for the Moors is not difficult to understand at all. The intellectual achievements of the Moors in Spain had a huge and lasting effect. Education was universal in Moorish Spain, while in Christian Europe, 99% of the population were illiterate, and even the kings were illiterate, while the Moorish rulers of Spain were scholars. At a time when all of Europe had just two universities, the Moors had 17, located in Almeria, Cordova, Granada, Joan, Malaga, Seville, and Toledo. In the 10th and 11th centuries, not a single public library existed in Europe. But Spain, under Moorish rule, had over 70 public libraries, including one in Cordova that housed hundreds of thousands of manuscripts. Universities in Paris and Oxford were established after visits by French and English scholars to Moorish Spain. The Moors brought in a West African tradition of learning that was rooted in the scholarship of the great empires of Ghana, Mali and Songhai from a region that boasted higher educational institutions dating back to the 8th century in cities like Jenin, Gao and Timbuktu. According to the United Nations education body, the oldest university operating in the world today is the University of al Karoin in Morocco, founded during the height of Moorish rule in 859 AD by a black woman named Fatima al-Firi. So the Moors brought enormous learning to Spain, which over centuries spread throughout the rest of Europe. As earlier stated, this system of education taken to Europe by the Moors seeded the European Renaissance and brought the continent out of the 1,000 years of intellectual and technological stagnation of the Middle Ages. The Moors, who ruled Spain for 800 years, introduced new scientific techniques to Europe, such as an astrolabe, a device for measuring the position of stars and planets. Scientific progress in astronomy, chemistry, physics, mathematics, geography and philosophy flourished in Moorish Spain. At one point, Cordova, the heart of Moorish territory in Spain, was the most modern city in Europe. The streets were well paved with raised sidewalks for pedestrians. At night, miles and miles of streets were well lit by lamps. Mind you, this was several hundreds of years before there was a single paved street in Paris or a street lamp in London. Cordova had 900 public baths and it was a known legend among the Spanish that a poor Moor would rather go without bread than soap. The Great Mosque of Cordoba is still one of the great architectural wonders of the world, despite later Spanish meddling with the structural design. Its low scarlet and gold roof, supported by 1,000 columns of marble, jasper and porphyry, was lit by thousands of brass and silver lamps which burned perfumed oil. It was also the Moors that introduced to Spain and Europe the convention of breaking up meals into several courses in an orderly manner by starting a meal with soup and ending with dessert rather than just eating everything all at once in a disorganized manner. The Moors introduced paper to Europe as well as Arabic numerals which replaced the clumsy outdated numeral system the Europeans were using which they'd inherited from the Romans. The Moors also brought the compass from China into Europe the Moors introduced many new crops, such as the orange, lemon, peach, apricot, fig, sugarcane, dates, ginger, and pomegranate, as well as saffron, cotton, silk, and rice, which remain some of Spain and Southern Europe's main products till this day. The Moorish rulers lived in huge, beautiful palaces at a time when the monarchs of Germany, France, and England lived in very basic buildings, which were actually just barns with no windows or chimneys. One of such grand Moorish palaces is called the Alhambra, meaning the red one in Granada. 
and is one of Spain's architectural masterpieces. Today, the Alhambra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Moors introduced new methods of improving soil productivity, such as irrigation, crop rotation, and the use of manure. Moorish doctors and physicians were especially trained and highly regulated. Europeans offered no competition with Moorish advances in pathology, etiology, therapeutics, surgery, and pharmacology, wrote Jose Pimienta Bay in his important work, Golden Age of the Moor. Moorish scholars like Jabir discovered nitric, nitromuriatric, and sulfuric acid. They were well versed in the sciences well before Europe. The Moors' scientific curiosity extended to flight. Ibn Furnas made the world's first scientific attempt to fly in a controlled manner in 875 AD. Historical archives suggest that his attempt worked, but his landing was not successful. So Africans took to the skies 600 years before the Italian Leonardo da Vinci developed a hand glider. The works of numerous Maori scholars were translated into various European languages and were required reading in the new universities that were being established across Europe. These include Generalities of Medicine by Averroes, Solitary Regime by Evan Pace, Primus Canonis by Avicenna, and Altasis by Abu Cassis. Researcher Jose Pimiento Bay also notes the close proximity of the founding states of Europe's major universities to the translation of Moorish works from rulers such as Alfonso X of Spain. These new European centers of learning relied primarily on Moorish texts for centuries. The modern masters of strategy as shown by the invention of Shatranj, the direct ancestor of chess. Said bin Jubay, a Sudanese, played Shatranj as early as the 7th century and the game would later on find its way across the Sahara and into the Iberian Peninsula and Europe. In Portugal, the Moors ruled and occupied a city they named Las Buna, the city now known as Lisbon, the capital of Portugal. The Moorish Empire went through many tests and dynasties before political and social fractures contributed to the downfall of the empire which lasted well over 800 years. The Moors signed the Act of Capitulation and surrendered their last stronghold, Granada, in 1492. To answer the question, where's the black ancestry in Spain today? Well, it is very small because after their military defeat or rather their military surrender, the Moors were given the option, as were the Jews, to either convert to Christianity or be exiled or executed. About 80% of them chose exile and headed straight back into Africa. This migration began around 1501, roughly a decade after their capitulation and with the rise of a new, more European social order. A large number of the traits on which modern Europe prides itself today came to it from Moorish Spain, namely free trade, diplomacy, open borders, etiquette, advanced seafaring, research methods, and key advances in chemistry. The impact of the African Moors on Europe was far-reaching to say the least, and it's therefore no surprise at all that in 2023, a full 530 years after the exit of the Moors, the people of Europe, in their traditional festivals, celebrate the glory, the magnificence, and the supreme influence of the Moors. Thanks for watching this episode. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification bells so you can get the next one on Africa's great civilizations.